we in it for Kapstadt what? The real Kapstadt And anyone who says I didn't All they did was pride, pride They losing their composure uh. Do it for exposure uh. Check the photo You can tell she's not sober I know her Mommy got the liquor by a boat I'm a chauffeur And I drove her like Toyota Corollas No, bruh I don't dance I'm just dabbing it It looks like I'm sneezing And I didn't have a handkerchief uh. Achoo Bless me Then I bless you Power to the colored bro I'm under I wear too I'm feeling like I'm Nelson So I'm looking for a winnie Need a girl like P. Diddy In a modified mini uh. I'm the white general It's an army I've started, the king of the castle, salute the commander, I'm armed with a rifle. Me and Cape Audio go way back. I like to say it like that, you know, because they supported me very early on in my career. And uh, one of my biggest songs, Salutas, was actually made here, in this very studio that we sit in, you know. So since then, I always knew that we'd have a good understanding also because you guys knew what I was trying to do. You know, plus also Cape Audio College, I mean, the first word is already, it speaks to me in many ways, you know, in many volumes. So I'm always representing Cape Town and I'm always pushing our local talent, you know, whether it be producers, engineers, musicians, you know, uh, poetry. I'm always trying to make sure that the people get seen, you know, especially if they're good at it and they determined, as determined as I am, you know, so... Um, Uh, K Faith is one of those people that I can tell her like two days before you are when I come record something, I have this many tracks, can you get me a day, you know? And I don't think there's ever been a time where she actually said no, you know? And, and because of that, I can see that her, her hunger is there, you know? She's eager to work and you don't find a lot of people like that these days. And the fact that she's working in one of the best facilities that she could be, this is like training with the pros. You know, this is like practicing with the best of the best. So even when I come here with my work, I always make sure that, yo, I'm, I'm up to date, I'm on par, crystal clear, there's no errors, there's nothing I forgot, there's nothing I want to do over, this is final, you know. So that when we come, we, we feed off each other in terms of work, you know. She's on the other side of the mixing dish, she knows what she's doing and I'm in the booth and I know what I'm doing. There's no confusion going on, you know. And in terms of like uh, post-production and quality, I, I don't think it gets, it gets any better. You know, I mean, Cape Audio has always provided me with a sound that I can always tell, yo, there's a difference between if I record here, if I record at another studio, or if I record even in a home studio, it's your garage vibes, your room vibes, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can tell that there's a significant difference in terms of the, the final product when it's finished, you know? And w when you record in a top-class facility also, you know, you want to, to match the standard. You don't want to come with something that's below average and then you record it in one of the best facilities ever. You know, you at least want to match it so that the product that comes out, people can say like, yo, there's a dope studio, a dope song came out, the mixing and mastering is good, final product is clean, nice. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that we're all on the same level, I would say, it helps a lot. And the end result is much better because of that. So I have to give a shout out to Cape Audio, Cape Faith, everyone who's been, who's been taking care of me all this time, you know, salute us. Mm. Well, um, aside from doing the uh, the corner to corner stuff that we did with Red Bull also, like we, uh, we started a new initiative now, me and a friend of mine, uh, called Own the Block. And basically I told him same thing like with this mixtape, yeah, these mixtapes are, are more or less unfinished beats that Maloon the Boom had, you know, that he compiled and released as a beat tape. Um, there's no separates for it. It's going to be grimy, it's going to be raw, it's going to be underground. And I said we need to return hip-hop in South Africa to that because Cape Town started hip-hop in South Africa. You know, it came from here, Mitchell's playing for God's sakes. You know, so I felt like if we were to do some sort of an event, an ongoing thing, before we even take it to the stage and lighting and all these professional things, mics and, you know, sound guys, I think we should take it into the street first because we need to let the youth understand that this is a street culture. People began in the street. It was done by disadvantaged people who couldn't do the music they wanted to. So they had to find other music to make in the meantime, in between time. And um, we came up with a concept uh, called Own the Block. And basically what we do is we, we go into uh, popular areas or just landmark locations, and we set up rap battles, you know, but street rap battles. Like we want the guys to feel what it's like to stand on a pavement and lose or win 
amongst a crowd of people that they have never met or know nothing about them, you know, and we want them to, to basically have that, that experience because by the time they get on the stage, they must know what it's like to be booed or they must know what it's like to be cheered, you know, and they mustn't have any fear because performing in the street for a bunch of people who are just walking by daily commuters, that, it doesn't get any realer than that, you know. So we want to teach them the fundamentals, like don't expect rewards immediately. Don't just come into the game and think that it's ABC and now you're on this platform and now you can turn your back on everyone else. No, we want to bring you down to the, the bottom level, but we also want you to understand that you can excel, you know. So by winning this battle, you become the owner of this block. This is your block now because you, you ran that, you know, you took that and now the medal is yours. So with the on the block stuff, like we've been to a few areas now and um, and even like the popular landmarks and the response has been good. You know, we're going to fast food, you know, restaurants, your bonus, cozy corner. You know what I'm saying? We got Weinberg taxi rank, uh, town taxi rank. So we want to hit these spots where you as a as an individual, you walk there, maybe your whole life. And now today you can say, I, I battled there and I won. The next time you walk past there, you might tell the person, you see that corner there? That's where I battled on my first rap battle was there and I won. Because I have stories like that that I can share about from when I started rapping, you know. So, yeah, we just want to basically take it back once again, as this project is as well, to the essence, you know, to, to where it all started. Well, my latest project that I have embarked on is called Wi-Fi. Why question mark Fi after the Y gen right there, always promoting. And... Um, it's my 26th mixtape amongst my vast catalog. So it's been a while since I also got to make a mixtape, you know, and I wanted to kind of return things in my career also in, and in my personal life to kind of the essence of hip hop and the things that I liked about hip hop when I was a child, you know, the beats, whether it was the scratching, whether it was samples that they were using, like there were certain sounds I used to like, and I would listen to a song till the end, maybe just so I could hear that end piece, you know, so just, that, that nostalgia almost, you know. I want to transport those who are familiar with the sound to that time, and for those who don't know it, I'd like to introduce them to something, you know, the younger generation of kids. So um, it's a 15 track mixtape, uh, fully produced by Maloon the Boom. And the reason why me and him get along so well in terms of the work we do, is because he, he, he has a sound and a fresh take on the boom bap, you know. So it, it's not just like your DJ Premier boom bap or your Jay Dilla boom bap, but it's more of like, yeah, we, we, we take the drums from that, but then let's go sample some of Morocco's music or let's go sample some of this Mexican stuff, you know what I mean? Or let's go, yeah, what are they doing in Arabia, you know, in the eastern parts of the world? So you will you play with things like that, man, and that's what I enjoy about it because then it becomes unique, you know? And with my style of rap also, it becomes even more unique, you know, because now you've got some of the Cape flavor, you got some of that international sound also that I can do. So I think it, it's a good blend, good blend. The thing I like about hip hop also is that we are the biggest thieves of the, <laughs> the genres of music. I think we like, we take the most, you know, and that's what I like, like hip hop is just basically a mixture of all different types of genres in one. You know, you hear a classic sample in it, you hear maybe a piano drift in it, or you hear Whatever the case may be, you can even sample Beethoven and turn it into a hip hop beat. You know, there's guys who have done it before. And, and I like that, that we take the leftovers and we serve you a decent meal with it. You know, the plate that we give you in the end, you'll never even say that we just comprise the leftovers and we fed you. You were actually well fed of that, you know. So for me, this is the hip hop I grew up listening to. You know, I started listening to Rakim, Red Man, Method Man. DMX, Exhibit, Cannabis, Big Pun, you know, guys like that, man, Fat Joe, Terror Squad. So I was always very drawn to hard beats, you know, and even like a guy like Eminem who had uh, Dr. Dre as his, his main producer, you know, so he had a nice sound behind him. And me, one of the things I always felt like I sounded nice on was boom bap, simply because I started learning how to rap on boom bap. I didn't start to learn how to rap on Lil John or, you know, Lil Wayne or anything like that. Nothing against those guys. I did listen to that music as well when I got older. But like I said, I wanted to return back to the basics, man. 
the things that I love the most of it. And whether or not people's gonna like it, I don't actually care to be honest with you. I'm doing this for me and I'm doing this for the the hip hop listener that misses this, you know, that feels that this is needed again, but no one is maybe supplying him, especially in South Africa, you know? Well, the thing that also, um, that added to the fact I made so many tracks because the beats were very short. And this is another thing about hip hop that I used to like is that when producers would make beat tapes, like for example, the story of how Jay Diller and Madlib met, it was that Madlib had heard one of his beat tapes and then he decided to rap over it and then he sent it back to him. And then that's how they actually became friends online. They didn't even meet each other until the album was out because everything was just being sent to one another, you know? And that kind of raw mentality and that raw elements of hip hop, that's why I say like we are the greatest thieves, you know? We take and then we remake it, you know? We recreate, we put our own spin on it and then it becomes something new again, you know? So when Maloon gave me this beat tape, he was like, yeah, you can take what you want, there's 86 beats. Now, as you know, this is my 26th mixtape, so that alone tells you that I like to rap. You know, I have a large catalog, you know? I have a large collection of my own music. And I thought, yo, it's been a while since I got to just geek out, you know, where I just take beats home and just write, you know? And, and I don't have to worry about, oh, this one is gonna play on the radio, oh, this one I wanna shoot the video for so I shouldn't make it too long, or, you know, this one I wanna feature. No, I went in as if it was 1996, you know? And I found a beat tape and I didn't know what to do other than just destroy it, you know? So I, I took my favorite beats from the tape and um, I tried to piece some old songs that I had written because I have books at home, you know? So I have almost like a library of my own music as well that's unreleased, you know? And a lot of those songs are gonna be missing forever if I don't record them. They're just gonna be laying in my book, they're gonna gather dust and I'll look back on them like, wow, maybe I should have made this one day. So, so I thought like, let me put these songs to use and let me write some new ones as well and just go into studio and, and dominate, you know, for as much time as I can. And like I say also, this is necessary for me because sometimes when we are now in the music industry, you know, in doing the business side of things, you're kind of trying to cater to what people are asking for. You're trying to give them something that they will digest easily, something familiar, something they're really used to. And this, yeah, I get to go left field. You know? I get to go back to what I want to do and I return it to the music I grew up listening to, like I say, the classic hip hop essence, you know, the boom bap stuff, the stuff that actually birthed a lot of hip hop heads, you know, and a lot of the artists like your KRS ones, you know, uh, Big Daddy Kane's, Cool G Rap, you know, these are the guys that, that took that sound and, and gave it life. And basically, I feel like in 2016, there are guys overseas who are, who are still making it. You get your new cats, but here in South Africa, I feel like it's lacking now at the moment. Man. And I have a lot of young people who's watching me that are listening to the new school music, but they don't know what I'm influenced by. You know, like I don't listen to new rappers. I listen to new rappers who are influenced by because I want to become as good as them, you know? So I study the teacher, not the student. And this is one of the, the outcomes of that. You know, uh, Maloon the Boom, this is what he, he specializes in. He's not a guy who's trying to do this. He's the same as me. He grew up listening to a certain sound. Like when we, when we were there in, in Switzerland, we were listening to a lot of Slum Village old, mi um, old mixtapes that they did with Jay Diller. We were listening to Salad Dwellers, you know, 1996, and he's playing me all these things. And then he says, listen to the sample, listen to the jazz. Listen to, you know what I mean? And then when I came home, I was like rejuvenated in that sound again. And when he get when he gave me the beat tape, I was like, nah, I, I have to put my stamp on this. So, I mean, <clears throat> what, what advice then can you give, especially young up and coming rappers, you know, when it comes to preparation, getting ready for studio, mm. getting ready for recording? You know, the misconception that the other people have about hip hop, and I suppose it's because they watch too much TV, is that it's easy. You know, they think that this is, um, a holiday, that this is like a, a camp for them, that they can just a seven day trial run and by the eighth day you're a rapper now, you know, because you can rhyme cat, hat, mat, rat and sat. So now all of a sudden you're a rapper as well, you know, which technically is kind of true. If you can rhyme words, you don't have to make sense anymore, but if you can just rhyme words together that sound nice and maybe even mumble it so we really can't hear what you're saying, you might, <laughs> you might go the distance, my man. You might sell platinum just from that, you know? But if you want to stand the test of time, because those things are going to fade, 
it's trends, it's phases, you know, it's year to day, and in four months' time there's a new guy now, and we forgot all about the guy who was four months ago. You know, so if you want to stand the test of time, one thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to know the ledge, knowledge, know the ledge, you know, do your research. And if you look at the great artists of our, of our time that we had, um, you look at the guy like Tupac, for example, who, who released more music when he wasn't alive than he did when he was, because he was constantly recording. People praise Lil Wayne also for his work ethic because he made so many mixtapes and then he released the album and then they wondered why did the album sell a million in one week because of all the work he had put in, in those mixtapes. You know, even someone like Drake, for example, I don't even listen to him, but his productivity is there. Almost every month there's either a new feature that is in or a new song that is in, you know, because he's constantly working, he's always recording. And the recording process is one of the most underrated processes of the entire package of being an artist you know this is the time here where there's no audience you basically perform into the mic you know you are now coming here and it's you versing the mic you're battling against the mic you don't want to be defeated by this mic you know because you were maybe wrapping it in your room for a month or whatever and now you get here and now it's, it's on now whatever happens now is going to be recorded and you can't change it after this moment you know, so you have to take it very seriously because it's going to last forever. Long after you're gone, that song remains. You know, so when I come into the, the studio, number one, it's work time. No one can reach me at that time, to be honest with you. No one can reach me in terms of phone calls, messages. I'm not going to reply to anything now. I'm not going to answer the phone. Most probably if I'm in the booth, it's not going to happen. I leave the phone on still, but <laughs> there's going to be no communication because at this moment I'm in my own world. This is what I've been waiting for, basically. All the, t the time I spent at home preparing is, is done now, you know? So when I come here, I'm very focused. I'm very uh, time conscious because I know that we're always on the clock. You know, there might be something else I have to do afterwards or it might be a late night session. We don't want to go too long, you know what I'm saying? So basically, I don't come to play games. I don't come to waste time, you know, because this is actually the time now where I'm creating the art. Now it's being painted. You know, before that you do your little sketches in pencil and you can erase things. And, but like I say, this is now the permanent moment. This is what's going to last forever, you know. So I have to make sure that when I come there, whatever is going to be recorded is final. I don't want to be too abstract and I don't want to be too simple. You know, so I try and make it as, as accurate to me. Like, who am I, you know? I'm not a genius. And I'm not an idiot either, you know, I'm somewhere in between that, I'm in the middle, you know, so I, I basically just try and put that in my music because the problem with some rappers is they smart, but then they dumb it down. And the problem is other rappers are dumb, but they try and sound smart. And that's a problem right there, whereas me, I try and find the common ground that the man outside or the man working at ShopRite or Pick and Pay or Stutterfords, he'll be able to understand what I'm saying. He won't need to dissect it or do it in such a way that he has to go research what I'm talking about. Even if I do say things like that, it's purposely. Now I want you to go research. If I put it in like that or if I say something that seems like it's disguised, then I want you to uncloak that, you know, figure out what I'm saying there. I don't always want to make it too easy. I don't want to spoon feed them all the time because then that's what they're going to expect. You know, so I like to sometimes give them some complicated things, talk about some topics that they might not know about so that they can go research and see what I'm actually meaning, you know. But um, for the most part, like Cape Town is very diverse. You know, there's, there's a lot of cultures here and it's a melting pot. You know, there's so many different races, uh, different languages. Just in Cape Town alone, I'm not even going to South Africa now. I'm just meaning like from where I'm from, you know. So I try and include that and I try and incorporate that, whether it be a little ad lib in a song, whether it be the old song, whether it be the title of the song, like Salutas, for example. I... I always try and include some sort of home in it so that they can at least read up about where I'm from. That will be the reference, you know, or that will be the link to where I'm from, the word. So it's very important for me because when I listen to the guys that I admire, like Biggie, for example, he was always screaming, where Brooklyn at, you know, and he was saying he's the, the king of New York, you know, and uh, um, Tupac was big on California love, you know, um, to live and die in LA. 
You know, it was like his thing. They all were very proud of where they were from. Snoop Dogg was on Long Beach on the top of the record shop in his, his music video. He had the whole neighborhood out. So it instills that sense of pride, man. Like representing where you're from, your heritage and stuff like that. So I, I had to do the same. But I took it from them. I took the example from them. It's like you were saying, we don't go too Western with it also. But we use the application. You know, we take that method and we see what's going on in our environment. And then we duplicate that, you know. But we tell our stories. We don't tell this, we don't try and sound like them, you know. We try and show you that, yo, yeah, you wear that kind of thing, okay, we wear it in this style. Same thing, but different style, you know. So like I said, just application method would be different. But for the most part, I always try and make sure that there's an accurate representation of Cape Town when I speak. So I don't also want to sound like I'm one of these, you know, these stereotypical colored guys that they maybe put in movies, you know, um, the gangster types or whatever, the thugs and stuff like that. I also try and let you know I'm educated. You know, I have brains in my head. I know the grand scheme of things. I see what's going on, you know, but at the same time, I'm streetwise as well. You know, I have guys who are involved in that life. I have guys who are still involved in that life. Some of them is not with us. You know, some of them is behind bars, you know, and they're listening to my music there. Now, for me, that is a crazy thing because I'm outside there talking about their stories. I'm sharing it with the whole world of people who have no clue about it. You know, we're never going to see in that life it was not for me. So in many ways, I'm a storyteller, I'm an author, and I'm a reporter, you know. It's up to me to report the news as accurately as I can from my perspective, and that's what I do. Always make sure that you treat this like any other job that you would do in life. Don't look at it as a shortcut, because it's definitely not. You're actually taking the long route, you know. But um, treat it like any nine to five that you would have. And sometimes you're not even gonna do nine to five, you might do 24. You know, you might work longer than the next person has to work. So you have to be ready for that. You have to know that what you're getting into is not an overnight thing. It happens, but as quick as you will become a success overnight, you will also fall. You know, so you have to make sure that you bolt for this because it's a very shrewd industry. It's very cutthroat, doggy dog. Everything that you hear about the music industry is 100% true. You know, it's probably one of the only industries where everything they bad they say about it is, is that, you know. But, um, yeah, getting into it, you have to make sure that you work hard and that you treat it like our soccer player would treat soccer. Football, he practices every day, even if he's not going to play on Saturday, you know. So that's what you have to do. You have to make sure that you are constantly revising, you know, and always going through hip hop, even if you're just listening to it, even if you're just listening to beats a cappellas, instrumentals, whatever, even if you're just freestyling about things happening when you're walking to the shop like I used to do, you know. If you're just going to write to no beats or if you're just going to write even to some, some other artist's beats as practice, just to see what you would sound like, you know. And then maybe you can, you can match it to another beat later on in life, like that's the same thing I did now. So that's number one. Always make sure that you, you're constantly working on it, day in and day out, just like you would in a, at another job, you know. There's, no days off unless you really can't, but treat it like any other form of work that you would have. And lastly, I would say that I would like the youth especially to go learn about where hip hop began and how it started, the fundamentals, not only from the States, but also here in this country, because we are pioneers. And I don't think they know that, especially in Cape Town, you know, we pioneered South African hip hop music, which is a big thing. And it's, it's seldom mentioned in the history books. You know, the beginnings of hip hop was here. And I don't think that they also want to admit that it came from a ghetto in Cape Town, you know, a place where it wasn't supposed to uh, blossom. You know, nothing was supposed to come from there. Nothing good was supposed to come from there, at least. And one of the biggest cultures in this country came from there. You know, so we, we always have to commend that. And now that the kids have access to the internet, it's even better because they can learn it themselves if they just type it in. At search, search is like the greatest word of our generation, I think, because you have a choice to look for what you want to, to learn about, you know. And I think that if they go read up about what we did here, in Cape Town specifically, in terms of hip hop, they'll be amazed, you know. So those are my two points. So make sure that you, you work hard at this and you treat it like it's an actual job because that's what it is. It's a career if you can turn it into one and go do your history. Make sure you learn about this because it's bigger than hip hop. Must give a shout out first of all, Cape Audio College. 
You guys don't know I have hijacked your facilities. Late nights, I've been making tea there in the room at the bottom, but just with warm water, don't worry. There's someone's mug there. That I, I used even one of those classic granny mugs, but there's one on the side there. Looked like one that came from Victoria's time. I mean, shit. But anyway, it's nice. Salute us to Cape Audio for letting me, you know, be a night owl up in here. Must give a salute us to Cape Faith. Maloon the Boom, all the way in Zurich. Salute, bro. I'm holding it down this side. YGN for life. Salute us. Come back now. Yeah. <laughs>